and welcome back to my kitchen. We're gonna make cheddar cheese for the very first time today. <laughs> she does not share her food. you've been watching my videos you know that I am cow sitting a friend of mine dairy cow so I get a gallon of milk every single morning and I am having to figure out what to do with all of it I've been making butter and yogurt like I was before whenever I was getting milk from the Amish and just in the last week or so I've been making lots of farmers cheese so today I'm gonna branch out a little bit and go ahead and make some cheddar cheese. My plan is to make some mozzarella and cream cheese as well. But today we're gonna go for the cheddar cheese. I have all the stuff, so we're gonna make cheddar cheese. Let's start out with some things that we need to make the cheddar cheese, of course, would be two gallons of raw milk. So I do have that sitting out ready to go. So we just need a large pot, so hopefully this one will work. We need a thermometer, some cheesecloth, a long knife to cut the curd. We need a cheese press. I never, this is new, never used this one before. So I have this cheese salt, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. You can use sea salt as well. I have this mesophilic starter that we do for the cheddar. And then there's some calcium chloride and some organic vegetable rennet, if that's how you say that. So that is our supplies for making cheddar cheese. The one thing about cheddar cheese, even though it doesn't take very long to make today, it actually will have to sit out and dry for a couple of days. And then after it's waxed, it will have to sit for 60 days and be aged. So it is a cheese that does take a while, but I'm excited to make it today and see how it turns out. We're gonna go ahead and get some of our things ready. We want a couple of tablespoons of salt, sea salt or cheese salt. We want a quarter cup of water in this bowl. And then we are going to dilute the calcium chloride in this and have it ready to go. All right, so the recipe calls for eighth of a teaspoon calcium chloride diluted in a quarter cup of water. And then in the other bowl, we're gonna have a half a cup of filtered water. All right, and then to the half a cup of cool filtered water, we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of the vegetable rennet. And then we have our little package of our mesophilic starter that we have that ready. So we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and get the milk in the pot and we'll get that heated up to about 86 degrees. All right, guess who almost overfilled the pot? So this is gonna have to go in my bigger canning pot. Now that we have all the milk in this new pot, we're gonna go ahead and get, and get the stove on and we're gonna get this heated up to about 86 degrees. So we do wanna make sure that while we're heating up the milk that we do stir it frequently to make sure that it doesn't scorch or anything. I make sure that my stove is not turned up really high because mine likes to get really, really hot. Now while it is, when it starts to heat up, we will go ahead and put the calcium chloride that's diluted in the water in the milk. We're just gonna keep stirring, we're gonna check the temperature again, and we're gonna go ahead, as it is heating up, and put the calcium chloride that is diluted into the water into it. And then once it reaches 85 degrees, which I'm pretty sure I said 86 earlier, once it reaches 85 degrees, we'll put the mesophilic starter in, and we will stir that in, in up and down motions. So let's go ahead and add the calcium chloride that's diluted in the water. I'm pretty sure this is optional. You do not have to use this, but I think it forms firmer curds. So we're just gonna pour that in there and give that a little stir. So we just wanna check the temperature occasionally to make sure because it is heating up pretty fast. It's almost hit 80 degrees. We just wanna make sure that we keep it stirred so that we don't have any hot spots and we know what the true temperature is. 
All right, now that we are up to our 85 degrees, we're gonna go ahead and shut this off. And we are going to add the mesophilic starter. And we're going to mix it in with an up and down motion, just so it incorporates with the milk. It's time to move it from, move it from the heat source. And now that we've moved it off of the heat source, we're going to cover it up and then we're gonna set a timer for an hour and just let it ferment. All right, so now we're back after the hour. We have let the mesophilic starter set in the milk for an hour. We put the lid on it and just kind of let it do its fermentation. So we're gonna remove that lid. Now we're just going to stir this. I'm just gonna stir it up a little bit. And now we are going to add the diluted rennet in water. Uh, we're gonna add it with an up and down motion when we stir it as well. We just don't want it to be swirling around. This way it's just kind of staying put. We're just mixing it in, making sure that it gets in there. And then we're gonna leave this for another hour. We're gonna let it, actually we're gonna let it set for an hour with the rennet in it, um, or until the curds start to separate. So what'll happen is if you've made any kind of yogurt or cheese or anything before, the whey will start to separate away from the curds. So that's what we're waiting for. So just kind of check it periodically. I'm gonna set my timer for an hour because I've got some other things to do and I'll come back and check it then. Waited an hour and it still hasn't really shown what it's supposed to, what it's saying about the whey showing and the curds pulling away from the sides. But I went ahead and started, I actually let it set for a little bit longer. And then I went ahead and started cutting the curds. So let's cut some more of those and see what happens. So basically just a long knife and supposedly it doesn't have to be a sharp knife because you're just cutting these curds up and you can see them moving. So you cut them up and it's just I guess so it doesn't stir. So you can kind of see them now. Alright so now that we've got those curds cut we're going to slowly heat this up. 100 degrees and then we start stirring we don't stir now not sure why so we're gonna see what happens see if this actually makes because it's already not really doing what it's supposed to be doing so here we go all right so we got this up to 100 degrees the curds you saw the curds and we stirred the whole time while I was trying to get that up to 100 degrees uh, so it really didn't take very long. And now, as you could see, the curds are actually starting to fall down into the whey. So maybe I did do this right and it's gonna turn out okay. Next to it, we have the other pot that I started with and just a wire mesh strainer. It says to use a colander, but I'm afraid that my colander has too big of holes and that the curds will actually go through. So we're gonna use this. And so when this timer goes off, we will strain the curds and we'll have curds and whey.
All right, so it's the next morning, and I don't know that I will be making cheddar cheese ever again. <laughs> so you have to put weights on it to press the cheese. Now this is the end of a 12 hour press, but the thing is, if you saw what it was on before, my Pampered Chef batter bowl, um, that actually shattered at about 12.30 last night. <laughs> tried to balance it as best I could and I just didn't really have a good feeling about it and I should have went with my instinct because about 12:30 there was a huge crash and shatter and um, the weights actually stayed up here but the cheese ended up on the floor the batter bowl was shattered all over the floor so we had to clean all that up get the cheese back in the press and so I put it on just a cookie sheet with these weights back on it and I put some books underneath it so if it did tip it would catch it and I noticed this morning that some of the weights were actually leaning on the weight so it did catch it a little bit but I'm getting ready to take these weights off so we started with 10 pounds uh, for 15 minutes to kind of get it squished down a little bit and then we did 40 pounds last night and that was supposed to be for 12 hours so now I'm going to switch it and put 50 pounds on it and that's for 24 hours then after that after that we're going to just let it set out for two to three days 
and I guess it kind of forms a um, dry layer on the outside of the cheese. Then after that, after that is done, we wax it and then we let it set for like 60 days. So I'm hoping that this cheese tastes good because I'm not making it again. <laughs> Luckily we had these. So we've got 25 pounds and 25 pounds here. So what we have to do now is I have to take this out. All right, so you wanna make sure that your hands are clean. And then we're gonna actually take this cheese out of the press right now. And because we have to put new cheesecloth on it when we press it again. You switch the cheesecloth each time that you press the cheese. And I can definitely tell that um, it is actually getting pressed pretty good because I can't see, it did have little squares where you could see the curds that we cut, but it looks pretty good. This was the side that was on the bottom of the press, so we're actually going to uh, flip this over and put it on the new cheesecloth and I just washed, this is the, actually the one I used last night and then, or yeah, for the first press. And then I washed it last night and now I'm gonna flip the cheese over and we're gonna put it back in the press. Wash this cheesecloth. I'm just gonna kind of fold this up so that The lid has, kind of has a flat spot to go on. Kind of make that as even as possible. And then you'll notice that even though it seems really dry, I was still getting way out of it last night. So I'm gonna move these books out of the way for right now. But I would definitely recommend a cookie sheet, a cookie sheet to put your cheese on because the cheese press actually has little, um, I don't want to say legs, I guess, to kind of keep it up so that the whey can come out. So now, all right, let's put this on here. And then of course, this is gonna to have to sit for 24 hours now. And we'll just have to like keep an eye on it because if it's not perfectly balanced, it does get uneven and uh, fall off evidently. Okay. So there is our cheese press with the cheese in it. We've got our cookie sheet to hold the whey that comes out. And we've got 50 pounds of pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and put these books back under here just in case it leans. And then we'll wait for 24 hours and tomorrow morning we will get it out of the press and set it out and let it dry for two to three days.